Whether it's Christmas morning with my in-laws in Trinidad or here in the US or Thanksgiving with the Canadians, freshly made bread and ham is a staple in our homes and a Caribbean tradition. The secret is not only in the ingredients but the technique which I will show you later on but for this recipe you'll need a 5 to 9 pound smoked bone-in fully cooked ham, cloves that are not older than a year, honey, mustard, cinnamon powder, pineapple slices, and cherries, which are optional. You'll need a lined narrow baking pan. Keep in mind that if you use a wider pan, like a sheet pan, all the natural ham juices will evaporate more quickly, leaving you no basting juices. You'll also need a baster or a spoon, measuring cups, spoons, a paring knife, and toothpicks. If you're already excited about today's recipe, let's start baking. The packaging said to heat the oven to 325, remove all packaging and place the ham. Cut side down on rack, shallow roasting pan, cover loosely with foil. Heat approximately 15 to 20 minutes per pound. So it's really saying to heat and not to cook, but we will still cook our ham and we will also wash our ham. I'm going to use this old lime that I have here. It looks old, but it's still good. I'm going to use it to just scrub the ham to remove any freshness. I'm using it like a brush. I know some people boil their ham, but I have never seen a reason to because the hams that we get here in New York, it's not as salty as the ham that you get in Trinidad. But if you know that your ham is very salty, you should follow the packaging instructions and boil your ham if it's required. Next, I'll score the ham in a diamond pattern and we'll place the cloves on each corner. So to do this, I usually start at the base and I come down using a very sharp paring knife. Not too deep. I don't know if you can see it with the camera. Now I'll do it in the opposite angle. If you wanted to do something simpler, just make some X's to insert the clothes. Doing that will make inserting the clothes much easier. And will also help to create some ridges for the glaze to penetrate. So I'm going to continue this until the surface is covered and I like adding a lot of cloves. You add according to your preference but I can assure you that cloves give it a really unique holiday flavor. So for a five to seven pound ham I like using about a hundred cloves. You don't have to count it, that's about two tablespoons. It helps to get the kids involved to do this. And I used to have a neighbor, a 10 year old neighbor who used to come over because he loved my ham so much. And he'd come help with the insert in the cloves so that he was guaranteed a piece of ham late, later on. So I also like placing one in the middle of the diamond. Just place it anywhere that it can be easily inserted. And this is a very meditative process as well. Before doing this, you should preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. For many years, I put the glaze on and then 
baked it but I found that the glaze ran off very easily so now I bake it for a couple of minutes about 10 minutes per pound and at the end of cooking I put the glaze on raise the heat to broil and by doing that the glaze stays on and creates a nice crust on the top that makes it even more delicious so I'll be doing that technique today but if you wished and if you didn't have time you could put the glaze on now but wait until you see the end it's going to be really delicious I've been using the same combination of in ingredients for over two decades and it's the one that my family loves the most I have tried here and there other variations but it's not as delicious as this so this is the recipe we will stick with. This is the recipe that has become part of our family tradition. Now I'll place the ham in a narrow baking dish lined with parchment paper for easy cleanup. And I'll bake it for a little over an hour until it releases all its juices and then we'll put the glaze on. I'll measure out one cup of brown sugar. You may use demerara, turbinado, or raw brown sugar. I oil the measuring cup to prevent the honey from sticking to the sides. One quarter cup of honey or more, if you like it, runny. Two tablespoons of regular or Dijon mustard. Half teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and this is optional. And now we will mix it to combine. If you wanted a spicy element to this, you certainly could add chili powder, cayenne powder, ground habanero, fresh habanero, scotch bonnet, or weary, weary pepper. If you wanted to add some ground cloves here, instead of placing it on the ham, that would be another option. By doing that, you will not have a pronounced clove flavor and it will not penetrate the ham. I always give it a taste. Mm. Yummy. In the event that the ham did not release a lot of juices or the juices evaporated too quickly, you could pour the pineapple juice at the base of the pan. Next, we'll secure the pineapple slices and the cherries using toothpicks. Cherries are not my style, but because many of you love cherries, I'm going to stick that in there for you. Remove the stem and just stick it in somewhere in the middle just for the sake of presentation. Okay, so now I'm going to paste the brown sugar over the ham. You can use your hands. I feel more comfortable using my hands. If that is too difficult for you, you can make it more runny so that it slides down the ham. And you could boil it to make a glaze and just pour it on if you don't want to get this messy. But I don't mind messy. I'm going to put most at the top because with the heat it's going to caramelize and spread. This is going to be really delicious. And I know that for a fact. All these flavors work well together. Don't worry if it's not all over because we will be basting it in a couple of minutes. And we'll achieve that lovely glaze effect. Put your broiler on now. In the oven you're going to switch from bake to broil. Now let's put it back in the oven under the broiler and keep a close eye on it. Get your baster ready as well. Since I already have these pineapples I'm just going to break it and put it at the bottom to flavor the glaze. Okay and now we'll put it in the oven. As you can see, the glaze is darkening and at the back of the oven, it's getting more brown than the front. So we're going to spin it. It's all about knowing your oven and keeping a close eye on your ham. Now we'll start the basting process. It's been about seven minutes. We'll put it back in the oven and reduce the temperature to 350 degrees so that it won't burn at the top. As the sauce at the bottom continues to cook, it forms a luxurious glaze 
which we will use to baste the ham every 10 or 15 minutes for a couple of minutes at a time. Here's where the real magic is happening now. As the heat hits it, it's creating a perfect glaze on top of the ham. We will continue to glaze the ham for five minutes more and then we'll remove it from the oven. And this is exactly what we've been aiming for. That brown bits on the top, the sugar has created a crust or a layer on top of there. All the basting has created layers of flavor. This is going to be absolutely delicious. The warm spices, the pineapple juice, the brown sugar, the cloves, all those flavors have combined to create phenomenal flavors here and an astounding end result. We'll allow this to cool and then we'll slice it. Don't be afraid to cook it to this lovely dark brown color. It's not black, it's dark brown and it's crispy at the top. Keep the sauce at the bottom. We will pour that onto the ham after we slice it to create even more flavor. This is absolute perfection. You don't want a light colored ham lacking in flavor. This is the ideal color. And that's all there is to it, my friends. You can slice it as thick or as thin as you like. Growing up, my Nana taught us to slice it very thinly like this. And it could have been because we, he needed the ham to feed a lot of people. But it's what I'm used to and I find that it tastes better this way. You decide what works for you. I hope you enjoyed being in the kitchen with me today. If you don't hear from me, my friends, for the rest of 2020, I wish you and your family the best holiday with delicious eats and most importantly, may your hearts and homes be filled with love and laughter. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. I pray that 2021 brings you all your hearts and tummies desires. I look forward to sharing more delicious recipes with you. I love you all and I thank you so much for your feedback, your support, your comments, your likes, sharing my videos and lastly, thank you for your friendship and for being a part of my family. Until next time, stay safe and be well. Bye bye. You're going to pick, you're going to pick. Yes, I'm going to pick on my life, you're going to pick. Huh? What? You're talking about Miriam? Did you just say I'm thick? Right, stop looking like an old man and just do it like he's a young man. Smells <laughs> good. Smells good? Alright.